<laughs> ask yourself the question, what is the nature of existence? Where is the universe? Who am I? Why was I born? How should I live my life? What happens when I die? <clears throat> These are the ultimate questions. And the answers all we can know is that in the present moment we get an answer to the question, who am I? I am Sumato Bhikkhu. And we see that as a conceptualization. It's a anicca to kanata. You can see the movement of the mind. You say, who am I? And the answer comes, I am Sumita Bhikkhu. Was I born? I was born to be in harmony with the ultimate truth, to be one with nature, or whatever, yeah, whatever clever answers you can think of to the ultimate question. But seeing the, the nature of existence as it really is, when we talk about sankharas or compounded things or phenomena, that all compounded things, all sankharas, are impermanent. They're imperfect, they're not self. They're not me, they're not mine. They're anicca to kanata. All compounded things, what do we mean by that? All things that begin and end, arise and fall, come and go, are born and die. Such as our bodies, those things are everybody's body sankhara. When we look at our own body with our physical eye, mm. eye consciousness is a sankhara. The eye, organ of the eye is a sankhara. And the body that we see with the eye is a sankhara. And if we look at somebody else's body, it's a sankhara. Consciousness, these are all compounded things. Consciousness is sankhara. Memory, perception, conception, all thoughts, good and evil, high and low, passive and active, all the heavenly realms and all the hellish ones. All the concepts we have, England is a Sankhara, France, Russia, America, these are all Sankharas, male and female, young and old, Viridhamma is a Sankhara, We're all sankharas, all compounded. We are all born and all die, begin and end, come and go, <clears throat> arise and fall.
So when we recognize the significance of this, we understand sankharas, carrying it to its furthest extremes, all the stars in the skies. When you look up at night and see the stars and the moon, the eye that sees, the consciousness that arises, the objects themselves, the stars, the moon, space, all sankharas. So by knowing one sankara, we can know the nature of all sankharas. And we know that this body is an nature to kanata, and the conditions that come and go, the thoughts, perceptions, feelings, sensations, consciousness, all these are sankharas. They have the, the characteristics of anicca to kanata. Then we understand that the whole universe is a sankhara. Concepts about the universe are sankharas. Concepts about anything and everything. Knowing, not knowing, sense, nonsense, sanity, insanity. The ultimate questions are sankharas. So it leaves us nothing to depend on. We see things just as they are, knowing the nature of one compounded thing, we know the nature of all compounded things. Like knowing one sand, one grain of sand, we can know what a million grains of sand are like. So in our practice of meditation, we observe this particular thing that we have with us, this microcosmic universe we call body and mind, Nama Rupa. And through seeing that, we can get beyond it. We think of the universe as something uh, outside, out there, like a scientist, as an object. That's another sankhara. That's a thought, conception. Memories, all the memories we have. All the perceptions we have with their sankharas. Keep going on like this, seeing everything just in this way, a simplification of all the complexities. Seeing everything and nothing as anicca to kanata. Seeing your own conceptions about meditation, about Buddhism, about practice, about methods, about yourself, about the people you live with. Where is your mother right now? And that very doubt, that very image, that very memory, perception that comes as a sankhara, it's not your mother.
Then you go home and you look right directly at your mother with your physical eye. You say, ah. That's my mother. You are my mother. But that's also a sankara. It's consciousness of a physical object. It's impermanent. <coughs> and your concept of mother. And then you start thinking, mother means this, that. Mother did this. Mother was this way, that way. On and on like this. Memories of history, of past experience, pleasant, unpleasant. And so we create mothers in our minds out of all these perceptions, imaginations. When in actuality all it is are the five khandhas and their natural state of changing. We take all this complexity out of the universe by seeing it in a simple way. When we see the universe as a simple thing, then it suddenly doesn't, doesn't seem so hopeless. Are there any exceptions to this rule? Can we find anything that isn't a sankara? Think, think of something that isn't a sankara. It's not compounded. In all the theories, in all the thoughts, in all the uh, concepts that you might form, those are sankaras. So you begin to see the limitations of conceptualization. All thinking, all thought is not profound. You say profound thoughts, great intellects, profound thoughts. Usually means complex theories about existence that nobody else can understand. Making us trying to think that they're somehow profound and deep. But they're only thoughts. Even a most profound, complex theory or philosophy of life is only a superficial thing. It's a sankhara. It begins and ends. The nietzsche to kanata. It has no real substance, no inner core. In this way, we can empty out the accumulations of years of conceptualization, bias, prejudice, opinion, fear, worry, doubt, all our hang-ups, neuroses. We can just see, rather than as deep-seated problems that wait for years of psychoanalysis to be able to shed, we can see as superficial clouds, phantoms, soap bubbles, things of no real importance, of no, that have no real essence, surface. Our most sacred and cherished images of ourselves as being a deep sensitive person, gifted or whatever. If we like ourselves, if we don't like ourselves, we think of ourselves as negative images of hopelessly incapable failures that can't do anything right. And these both sankaras, superficial, of no real importance, no have no essence, no core.
So you see people suffering, you look around you, you look at people in their state of agony, their state of anguish and despair, and you see it's only because they're ignorant that they're suffering. Because they're superficial, they identify with the surface, with the floating clouds, the phantoms, the mists. They clutch it, foam, the bubble. People taking themselves seriously, all their desires, wonderful, well-analyzed conceptions of themselves, their problems, and they go endlessly on about how they're this way because of this and that way because of that. But in the state of awareness, what is that? A passing cloud, a sankara just floating by, one needn't attach to it, one needn't reject it. It's like the clouds in the sky, you can watch them float by without getting involved in their movement. The same with all your thoughts, views, opinions, the body you have. Consciousness comes and goes to the eye, the ear, the nose, the tongue, the body, the mind, memories, changing. And through this practice of seeing things just as they are, you become non-attached, or you are one who does not attach to any of these superficial, unimportant sankharas. Being wise means that you know the nature of ignorance and you're not identified with it anymore. And there's no more doubt. Is this ignorant thing my real soul? Is this great fear, this great ultimate terror, this great profound whatever it is that you think is your ultimate real self? It's only a conception. the sankara floating by. Well, how do you explain human suffering in this way? What about all the people that have been murdered or brutally treated, victims of circumstances? all kinds of human misery one can see around oneself. One can remember all kinds of things that have happened in the past. Wars and persecutions. These are also sankharas. It moves on and on and on, changing, sometimes high, sometimes low, good and bad, war and peace. But with awareness we get beyond these dualisms. Mindfulness is the path to immortality. And that you can't conceive. Immortality. And the moment you try to conceive it, you're creating another concept, another soap bubble. Another phantom arises in your mind. But if you can just watch that movement with a calm, composed mind, heart, 
then you're being wise right now. The minute you indulge in your doubts, your joys, your fears, then you're going to get pulled back into the samsara and suffer some kind of disappointment, despair, anguish, lamentation, sorrow. The question, you mean, my mother is only a soap bubble? You're trying to say <laughs> that my mother doesn't really exist? And that's a thinking. conceptualization. But surely, how can you just dismiss the whole universe as a soap bubble? And that's uh, doubting, not being sure, feeling angry, worried or fearful, feeling aversion, whatever you want to call it. So that one brings this awareness, or is aware, in the present moment, from one moment to the next. We'd like some, maybe some comforting answers about the explain that, well, our mothers really do exist in, the, in this sense, but in another they don't. And, get on into intellectual explanations of mothers and the universe and whatnot. And that's just thinking again. Trying to make ourselves understand and feel comfortable because we want to understand through our symbols rather than let go of all symbolization and dwell in that state of unbounded, unrestricted freedom, balance, sanctity. We cherish certain concepts about the universe, about mothers and fathers, about ourselves, about husbands and wives, the nature of existence. And when those concepts are threatened, Somebody says, it's only a delusion, we feel upset. But that feeling upset is a sankara, fear, doubt. Just keep that constant, constant reflection, looking at closely, rather than trying to figure out and rationalize, justify, explain, doubting. Uncertainty is a sankara. Certainty is a sankara. Sandra, 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 Sandra,